do. Welcome back to the channel. We've got a different style of video than normal. We're doing one of those comparison videos again. We've got with us today Azul, Azul GG here from Pokemon TCG. Is that correct? Yep, yep, yep. You got it right there. All right. So what's the deal with Pokemon? Tell us about like what your deal is like why do we know who you are and why are you relevant in the scene there what's that about um so i've been playing pokemon tcg for a while like competitively at tournaments since like 2010 um and i've done pretty well i guess like throughout my career uh done really well over the uh we call it like the post covid era um yeah post covid i've had a, a pretty good streak i was doing pretty well pre covid as well um, and then as far as like the competitive scene goes for content creation, I'm pretty popular or uh, pretty big in that space as well. There's not that many competitive Pokemon TCG content creators. So, you know, like I make YouTube videos, stream on Twitch. Um, so I'm big in that scene. Um, I do fairly well competitively as well. So yeah, that's how I'm, how I'm known in the scene, I guess. All right. But you've uh, got a name for yourself, uh, with a bunch of achievements, um, in the, uh, Pokemon circuit. Like what are some of your notable credentials? Um... Yeah, most recently, I guess, I got top four at Worlds last year. Um, and then I won the Oceania International Championship that season as well. And then the season before that, I won the North American International Championship. So those are like our uh, our biggest tournaments. The biggest, of course, is the World Championships. And then like this, the tier under that is the International Championships for like um, prestige and stuff as far as tournament goes. So... Most recently, those have been mine. Not too bad. You're, you know, you know how to play a little bit of this, how to summon Pikachu. Um, and what is the knowledge depth that you have in Yu-Gi-Oh? What do you know about this game, and what do you understand about the card game? Um, well, I understand. It's been a while since I've actually played a game of Yu-Gi-Oh. So I played a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh, but not like a lot. And I've only really played the Goat format because um, I know it's. I assume it's popular in the Yu-Gi-Oh community as well. But like a lot of Pokemon players who like have played Yu-Gi-Oh, like have GOAT decks on them for some reason. So it's like a very popular, <laughs> my understanding is that the GOAT format is like the most popular Yu-Gi-Oh format or up there. Um, so I like played a little bit of GOAT format. You know, I understand like trap spells, uh, spell cards, um, and then- So the basic rules, you you, you kind of yeah. have a, a, an idea of And there's that, normal right? summoning and special summoning. I believe you can, let me see if I can get this right. You can special summon as many times as you want, but you can only normal summon summon once a turn. Uh, you can normal summon with other like card effects and stuff, but like you know, just plainly with the rules, yeah, just one okay. normal summon per turn is how it works. I've got six cards for you here, right. um, and it's uh, it's it's some cards that are either really good or really bad, and it's your job to identify uh, which is which. Card number one. Uh, this is uh, my, shall we say, go-to for these quizzes. It's Pot of Desires. It's a normal spell card, so you know, just activate this as part of your main phase one. Um, you can uh, banish ten cards from the top of your deck face down, and it's a cost, meaning it, it happens regardless uh, of what your opponent responds with. Uh, and then you get to draw two cards, and it is also once per turn. And what is the maximum amount of cards you can play in your deck? Is it three? Like copies of cards is three. Your deck size is maximum okay. sixty at a minimum forty. Um, Tell me what you're thinking. Like, what's, uh, banish, what's your brain saying as you uh, as you is read? Banish it? discard pile or the like uh, the zone where you can't get stuff back or it's harder to interact with it. Yes, this the latter. latter okay. Um, well, I know draw power is really powerful in Yu-Gi-Oh because like people will read people who are like Yu-Gi-Oh players will read Pokemon cards and they'll be like they'll read Professor's Research, which is discard your hand, draw seven. Um, and like, oh my gosh, that's insanely powerful. And it's like, it's like, it's like fine. <laughs> in Pokemon, that's like fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but I, so I know draw power is insanely powerful. In Yu-Gi-Oh, of course, Pot of Greed is like a super famous card. I know about Pot of Greed. Um, so, but banishing 10 cards is a lot. But depending on how many, inter the, but the big thing I'm thinking about is like, how much interaction do you have with your banish zone? Because then in like some decks where you do, this would seem like it would be better um than others so what i will tell you is that there's a difference between face up and face down uh there's a lot of interaction with banish cards in oh, Yu-Gi-Oh for some decks um there's very very few interactions with face down banish cards so uh, okay pretty much you can consider for the purposes of this there's basically no way to retrieve the We're cards losing the cards um, when you banish them face down. okay but it still does draw two cards and yeah so i think based on just it drawing cards i'm gonna say because yeah, and you you, also, you just see so few cards that you're not you're you're not seeing the rest of some of your deck anyway. So whether or not you banish it or don't see it is kind of the same thing. So just because just the fact that it draws mm -hmm. cards, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's probably a good card. Sacrificing ten cards off the top of your deck, five in your opening hand, that puts your deck down to twenty five immediately. If you well, technically twenty three yeah. if you open this, it's like half your deck gone immediately. Yeah, but I feel like 
That's a lot of resources you can't interact with. If I remember with, you know, the last time I played, like you don't even see that many cards out of your deck anyways to begin with. So it's, if you don't see them or you banish them, the plus two is still worth it. Or it would be like a, effectively a plus one because you're playing the card to see two cards. You are not taking the bait. You are absolutely <laughs> correct. Pot of Desires is, is a good card, yeah. Um, I will caveat and say that it's very much deck dependent, especially in recent years. A lot of decks have what is known as engine requirements. But for uh, context, this card is currently uh, limited to two, I think, in the OCG, which is the Japanese region, the Japanese East Asian region. And then in Master Duel, the video game online, um, this card is limited to one. That's okay, how okay. powerful it is that they've actually addressed it. So yeah, exactly like you said, you don't see most of your cards anyway. It doesn't matter. So the draw power is is just is worth it. Yeah, so just for decks where like, decks that wouldn't play this card would be decks that are specifically pulling specific cards out of the deck fairly consistently. Exactly. Makes sense. Bang on. All right, next card here. Uh, this is Denko Seka. This is a level 4 Light Thunder monster. It cannot be special summoned, um, but while you control no set spell and trap cards, neither player can set spell and trap cards or activate spell and trap cards that are set. Not be special summoned while you control. The biggest thing that's going to probably throw me off here is I don't know how much attack and defense is good enough because um, I'm sure there's like good effects on cards, but the attack and defense numbers are so low, it's hard to like warrant playing the card, mm. um, and I can see it be the other way. I'll say that for a normal summon, 1700 is pretty decent. It's not incredibly powerful. Okay. Like, it's not 18, 19. It, 17 is fine. The question is just how good is the effect then at this point, right? It's probably the most yeah. important factor, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that seems pretty good as far as, like, some board control goes, um, but you have to have no set spells or traps, which are pretty good cards um, and allow you to do a lot of things. Um, so then you'd be, have to be like a super creature focused type deck. I feel like if you're playing this, if my under, if my my remember, remembering of how Yu-Gi-Oh generally plays out is correct, mm -hmm. um, but preventing yeah. your opponent from playing spells or traps does seem pretty good. It would be this doesn't seem like it could be. It seems like this would be weird to include as like a tech card for a certain matchup. So I feel like the deck would have to be like based around this card being a big part of your strategy. And then I would feel like you'd, there'd have to be other cards that do similar things. And then at that point as well, you're not playing very many spells or traps yourself. Um, unless you're like triggering them all before you put this into play to then prevent your opponent from... Um, let me see, make, make sure I understand this correctly. Cannot be special. While you control no set spells or traps, neither player can set spells or traps nor activate spell or trap cards that are set on the field. So it seems like a pretty unique effect in general in Yu-Gi-Oh from the other Yu-Gi-Oh cards I've read. So for that reason, I'm going to say it's probably a good card, but it's like maybe good in like one deck that is like built around it. But do remember it's double-sided, right? So it, it, does, it will affect yeah. you and the activation requirement is that you can't set anything. I would first. hope your deck is built around that. Though. That's going to be my hope here is that you build your deck around not being able to utilize spells or traps to prevent your opponent from being able to use, utilize spells and traps. Okay, uh, Denko Seka. I will say is not as relevant anymore, but it has seen some play. But in its heyday, uh, which was around probably 2014, uh, 2015, um, Denko Seka was one of the most terrifying and scariest normal summons that you could drop on your opponent uh, playing a trap or a back row deck, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> it's uh, as exactly as you described. It's uh, a card that you would play in a deck you build around. Um, meaning that you're playing typically a combo deck. And a combo deck, specifically, that doesn't utilize its normal summon. You side deck this card, um, which is, I hope, a common thing in Pokemon. Do you have side no, decks? No, but I know how side decks work, yeah. No side decks in okay, Pokemon. Okay, right. So I maybe should have also mentioned that as context. Side decking is a big part of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, so typically, this would be played in the side okay. deck. Um, and a very popular deck that really popularized Denko Seka was Shadal. Um, even main decking this card because of how good it was and because it's a light monster. Um, if you're playing against your opponent who has a bunch of trap cards in their deck, your normal summon Denko basically can't, they can't respond because it immediately hits the field. So unless they negate the summon um, with a specifically a counter trap, which I think was limited to one at the time, um, Solemn Warning and Judgment was banned. Uh, lots of information overload. Yeah. But basically, <laughs> TLDR, yes, you're right. Um, you need to build around this. Uh, but when it hits the field, it is extremely terrifying because you can't activate any of those traps that you've laid for your opponent. Yeah. And then you can't play anymore as well. So you're just potentially dead drawn at that point, I would assume. Sometimes you're just top decking spells and traps. All right. I feel like maybe I should have made these a little harder, <laughs> but uh, let's continue. You're two for two now. Might have to do a part um, two. This is, this is a trap card. This is a normal trap card. It's called Apex Predation. Uh, if you control a normal summoned or set monster, you can destroy all special summoned monsters on the field. Until the end of your next turn, after this is activated, you can't normal or summon or set, and you can only activate one per turn. Oh man, <clears throat> this one is definitely a little bit more confusing, a little bit harder to understand for sure. Um, 
Feel free to ask if you so what need is any a, context or like some breaking down of the how it works. Is a set monster one of the ones that's like upside down in attack mode or defense mode? Am I thinking of that correctly? <laughs> yeah, upside down with its with the, like you can't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only see the back of the sleeve. Yeah. Man, this one's tough. I mean, it's a board. Con it's like a board wipe card, which generally board wipe cards, but it only gets rid of special summoned monsters. So I guess like the big thing to understand for me to understand what this card would be. What is generally the ratio of normal summoned to special summoned monsters on a field? Because um, if it's only like, I guess if you, this would be like more of a defensive card for like a control, a board control type deck, where in formats where everything is being special summoned, this would be pretty good at like wiping your opponent's field and resetting, uh, and they start to take the board advantage from there. But if most stuff is just normal summoned, then it doesn't seem like it's going to be very good. I will say that for context in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, um, you're pretty much playing with special summoning. There is, it's, it's, it would be, it's more of, so like, you know, exception to the rule kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The rule is Yu-Gi-Oh is just a bunch of special summoning. Okay. There is exceptions where there are some decks that are normal summon reliant, and generally every deck does play normal summons, but your main win condition, you're advancing your game state, the best parts of your deck come from the special summons. Okay. It's a huge part of the game, and it's where all the speed and the power creep comes. And why a lot of people complain about modern Yu-Gi-Oh is because it's way too fast. Because uh, of all of the constant special summoning, and as you mentioned at the start, there is no upper limit to the number of special summons in a game. It's just limited to the, the cards in your hand that have effects that can be used. Okay, I think with that in mind, I would probably say this card is good. Um, generally, when I see like board wipe cards in general, whether it be like Magic, Hearthstone, we don't have anything like that in Pokemon, really. There's like some board limitation cards, um, but nothing like a board wipe card. But generally, they've always been pretty good. Of course, they are like kind of more deck specific to like more control based decks. But I'll go ahead and say this card is good as well. Now you understand how trap cards work, right? As well, right? It's not like spells that you can activate immediately. Yeah, you gotta set it, and you can't activate it on the turn that you set it, right? And it has to activate during your opponent's turn, yep. or you could activate it during your next turn. So any turn after the turn it's set, <clears throat> essentially. Yeah. So I guess it would be a little bit slow. So I guess in current Yu-Gi-Oh, with how fast you said the game sounds, I guess this card. For it sounds like for maybe current Yu-Gi-Oh, this card is too slow. Um. But I guess like in past formats, it sounds like it could be have been decent. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess like currently, maybe it's not good. But in the past, it's probably been. It's, it seems like there had to be a moment where this was probably decent. But yeah, I guess it, 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 you're taking that like turn off before you can actually utilize it. Maybe that is maybe one turn is too slow in current Yu-Gi-Oh. I actually don't know. But I'm still going to go with it being good here. Well, for context, trap cards generally are too slow in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Just in but general. If you play a trap-centric deck and a, and, a, and a deck designed around traps, like having board wipes and stuff like that going second is still pretty relevant. Okay. Like there's still a lot of decks that will, um, uh, you know, side into things like uh, solemn cards. They're still really good to set. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so I guess there could be better board wipes than this, but I, guess I would still say, yeah, it's probably a good card. Apex Protection is not a great card. No. no. It's uh, <laughs> it's 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 not ideal. The biggest problem with Apex Predation um, isn't that it's like too slow per se. It is actually pretty good. The issue is that, the, uh, weirdly enough, the restriction on it on yourself is quite rough. Until the end of your next turn after it's activated, you can't normal summon. But typically, um, decks that set a lot of trap cards are more normal summon reliant okay. um, than uh, special summon decks. Like, typically, like something like Labyrinth, it's kind of important that you can get Ariana going on the next turn. Um, Flu Wander, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Like so. Like, well, that's not really a trap deck. Um, but yeah, the the general gist is um, the restriction is pretty heavy. It's a trap card. It's slow, but it's also coupled with something that's um, kind of interesting. I think uh, because as a Pokemon player, you have a thing called rotation. Yeah. Right. So the problem is that in Yu-Gi-Oh there is no rotation. So there's a lot of cards. There's, there's a lot of cards. There's 12,000 plus cards available at any one time. And unless they've been specifically banned from being too broken, this card suffer, suffers from one of these issues where it's not terrible. It's not a bad card. It's just there's so many better alternatives. In like terms of board wipe cards? Exactly. Okay, yeah. There's just better cards that like, you know, Needle Ceiling just has like no restrictions. It just destroys all face up monsters. Um, for example, uh, you know, Torrential Tribute just destroys any, all monsters on summon, uh, things like that. Um, and you just spell cards as well. There's Lightning Storm, destroys all face-up attack position monsters. Raigeki is currently at three, uh, believe it or not, if you remember what Raigeki does. I do does. not remember um, what that one does. No. I've heard, I remember the name, but I don't remember what the card does. 
destroy all attack uh, destroy all monsters on your opponent's side of the field oh, that's, that's it. it just a spell card right? <laughs> yeah that's definitely better than this for sure yeah and that's just at three and like it's not really played yeah you know which is crazy to think but yeah it's it's one of those issues where it's like it's not a bad card it's not terrible it's just there's way better options yeah. if you do want to play this style of card makes sense let's see uh, we've got a another card here this is Pot of the Forbidden. I'm sure you know what Pot of Greed does, yeah. and this one kind of calls back to it. It's a level 9 monster, um, and it has a flip effect. I'm sure you know how Tribute works and Tribute summoning, right? Uh, I don't exactly remember, no. So you know how, like, level 4s, 3, 2, and 1 can just be normal summoned? Yeah. Well, 5 and 6 need to be normal summoned by sacrificing a monster that's already on the field. Mm -hmm. And then 7 and higher need to sacrifice 2 monsters um, in order to set or summon them. Okay. This one's got a... You ever played with like Jinzo or Air Knight Parshath and Goat? I, 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 Jinzo sounds familiar. That one sounds familiar. It's been so yeah. long since I've played, uh, actually played a game of Goat. Well, anyway, so this is a flip effect monster, meaning it's one of those like, you know, face down cards, yeah. upside down as you call yeah. it, notably. Face down. <laughs> you set this and then you can flip it. Um, and what it does is that you choose to use one of the effects, which is draw two, or you can return all spells and traps on the field to the hand. So you can just bounce all of your opponent's back row. Or it can destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Or you can look at your opponent's hand and then put one back from their hand into the deck. Yeah, I mean, all these effects are pretty good. Um, once again, the attack and defense numbers, I'm not too sure about if that how how relevant, like how how uh, if these are high enough um, to compensate for the cost of getting... 2,000 attack for this level of monster is kind of low, but the defense is massive. Okay, the defense is massive. Attack is low. The effects are good. Getting there is expensive for sure. So with that in mind, uh, yeah, I'm. But remember, you are you're kind of fixated are, on, like, essentially you're trying to just do this kind of like the old school way, yeah. right? Like just tribute two guys and then set, right? That's typically like not. I would say, spoiler, not how you would want to try and get to this card. So you're just going to, like, special summon two things and then special summon this, like, or special summon two things and then tribute them and then... Potentially something yeah. like that. I mean, I guess with, with that in mind, with how fa fast Yu-Gi-Oh! is currently, with my limited knowledge of that, just mostly people complaining on Twitter, um, I'm going to go with this is probably a good... The effects are so good. The effects are so good. It's just how fast can this get actually put into play, which I don't understand. Like, I don't understand the tempo of the game. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it's good just because the effects are so good. And it, with how fast uh, the game seems to be right now. Um, this card is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's terrible. As you mentioned, the effects are incredible. Yeah. But, like, how the fuck are you summoning this, right? There are some ways to special summon this. There are decks that literally special summon flip monsters from the deck for free. Uh, they're called Prediction Princess. That's a t uh, perfect archetype for this. They, they might play one of this and even then i think they've had some new support that's better than this but yeah big uh debate on this is that it's too high level and it's too slow even if you were to just special summon this it's a flip effect so you have to wait, wait anyway. the extra turn so yeah. even if you do get this face down immediately you have to sit and wait a turn and then flip it and then use it right Makes so sense. by that point your opponent's already played their turn and you're just sitting there like waiting with a set monster yeah yeah so not only does it require a ton of resources to get into play you just have to wait a turn until after you get it into play to actually utilize it there are some cards that let you flip it immediately but again that's like you're talking like three four card combos here just to resolve a single pot of the forbidden one yeah right? exactly all right that makes sense yeah, because then I guess at that point, especially for the draw two, you're like the the trade off isn't worth it, right? You're drawing two cards, but you put you played what three or four cards to get there. Here, I'd like to present to you uh, the Mystic Mine. This is a field spell. It's basically like a continuous yep. card that you just leave on the field, and it affects both players generally. Um, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, your opponent cannot activate monster effects or declare an attack. Uh, declare an attack. If you control more monsters than your opponent does, you can activate monsters' effects or declare an attack. Uh, during the end phase, if both players control the same number of monsters, destroy this card. Oh man, can you can you just like discard one of your own monsters if you want to, or no? Like, if you and if you have uh, more monsters in play than your opponent, at, like during your turn, if you have four and they have three, could you, can you just like send it to the yeah. grave for no reason? Basically, is what you're can you asking. Do that? No, no okay. you can't do that. Um. This one's tough. The biggest thing, I don't know how like powerful monster effects are in general. Like once they're in play, incredibly powerful. Has their has their like, effect usually already happened? Heart and soul. Or so game. okay. So like it's a con continuous effects throughout the rest of the game as long as the monsters in play. Uh, generally the activated effects, but there's a, there's a decent amount of continuous effects, and so this wouldn't work against continuous monster effects. Yeah. Um, but like j that's mm, yeah. I mean typically like there's a. Lot, as you play a combo, it's usually a bunch of monster effects that you activate that all do things together, and then you do combos, and you do, like, you know, 
um, all things involving ignition effects rather than continuous effects. Okay. So I guess the big thing that I'm kind of hung up on here is just like how easy is it to counter this spell from even happening? So that's like the, the number one thing I'm thinking about. And then, otherwise it does seem kind of good in like some kind of more control-based deck where you're not putting as many monsters in play and you're playing more around uh, spells and trap cards. Uh, then you're just going to have less monsters in play, which means you just put this card in play and then your opponent can't attack, uh, which seems pretty good. Um, but yeah, the big thing I wouldn't know is like how easy is it to stop this card from taking effect? And then if they do do that, I feel like you would just like lose if your deck is solely based around this card. If your opponent just has a counter or your Mystic Mine, then it feels like you're in a tough spot. And then I don't know how easy it is to get creatures off your board to then have its own self-destroy effect take place where if you have the same number of monsters the card gets destroyed so i don't know how easy it is to like somehow end up with less monsters on your side of the field from where you are um but so there's like a bunch of uh, extra deck mechanics um like do you know how fusion summoning works no how does the fusion summoning work okay so basically you can do a bunch of uh things involving your extra deck um called like link summoning synchro summoning xc summoning okay. um and basically the gist of it is that you sacrifice two monsters to combine them into a stronger um one monster okay okay uh so you can kind so typically one of the most popular forms of summoning right now is link summoning you combine two monsters to make a link two you can combine a link two with another monster to make a link three um it's uh it's just a bunch of ways that like let you access this extra deck it's the secondary pile that you have in your uh your play field called your extra deck, which you can access any time, provided that you meet the summoning conditions. So with a link summon, I can combine two of my monsters on the field, send them to the graveyard, and then summon one monster. Okay. So that would take my monster count down from two to one, potentially having the same as you. Then I'd have to wait till the end phase, and Mystic Mind can destroy itself, for example. Okay, okay. I guess with that in mind, and with this being a slower card, and Yugo being really fast right now, I'm going to go ahead and say this card is also i guess bad right now but it doesn't it seems like a, a good card just being able to make it so your opponent can't attack doesn't seem bad doesn't seem bad but i guess like right now and you get with how how fast you give is right now i'm gonna say it's probably a bad card so don't forget like what if try and think of a situation where one of you one of the players has zero monsters i mean then it's pretty good <laughs> um mm. that's true then it's pretty good I, I i guess like that yeah so the one thing i'm going back to i guess on this one then is just like how uh, how easy how easy is it to counter this from when it when it goes into play are there so would you say this was a, a field spell yeah is it so easy to ca if you use it against your opponent's field and they have a bunch of monsters they might have a card that negates yeah. it um they might play a bunch of uh spell and uh trap removal which there's a lot of in Yu-Gi-Oh. like a million different flavors of how to like destroy a spell card um in Yu -Gi -Oh. um if you play it if you play it yeah uh yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with this card being bad yeah i'm gonna stick with it being bad Okay, um, <laughs> I'm trying to like work out the logic for why you think it's bad. Why is it you think it's bad exactly? What was I saying? From the well, the biggest thing that I'm hung up on is like the the ability to just remove the card from play. So if it's like if it's a card mm -hmm. like that, it's like oh, when it gets put into play, it's great. Like, also, because this thing is like, is like kind of like a an overtime card. It's like the first turn you play it, uh, you might get an effect out of it. But if your opponent eventually draws into the counter counter to it, it can just be countered and removed from play. Um, but I just don't know. Yeah. That's the thing I'm hung up on is like what level of access do people have to that? And after what you just said, I'm like, well, if there's a lot of ways to interact with removing spell cards from play, then this card doesn't seem that great because you'd have to be in a board state where you're behind on monsters. But I guess control decks would be it would be playing towards that or more. Um, well, I guess maybe this card is well, if you are like a more of a back row, would you call it a back row type deck? Um, trap cards, spell cards. Yeah. And this seems like control yeah, control. Like in a control deck, this does seem good, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, I guess maybe there's nothing better than this in a control deck as well, because then it would, unlike a, a board wipe, um, a board wipe card, they could just start resummoning again. But for Mystic Mind, you'd have they would have to wait until they find a way to deal with Mystic Mind. Um, I just don't know how good. Con I guess that's another thing. I just don't know how good control decks are in Yu-Gi-Oh right now, because um, everyone's always complaining about how fast the format is. But I guess if a control de deck just wins with a board wipe on turn two, effectively. That's the same thing as the game being fast, even though it is like a control deck. Yeah, I'll stick with it being bad. Right. <laughs> All right. So obviously you're correct in that there's just so many like ifs and conditions that need to be met. Um, but what I will what I will say, so for context, Mystic Mind is currently banned. This is arguably one of the most hated mm. cards in the history of the game. Okay. Uh, when this thing was at its uh, peak, it was just 
one of the most, yeah, pro probably the second most hated card ever in the history of this game outside of like Maxi maybe. <laughs> um, Mystic Mine is, um, so the, the way you described it is all true and stuff, but the way it was applied and you're, and all of the Yu-Gi-Oh players when they first ever read this card probably didn't really recognize like what the practical use of this is. You're kind of thinking like, okay, I'm going to activate this and then set a monster and then hopefully they have more than me and then I can like slowly come back and win the game. The, the way that people were using Mystic Mine was that you go first, you have a bunch of cards, you have a bunch of monsters, you set up a big field, and then I just go bang, activate Mystic Mine. Now you can't use any monster effects and now you can't attack me. And so I'm just going to sit and wait and deck you out. Just literally just wait 35 turns oh until you <laughs> run out of cards in your deck and I'm going to win. That was one of the win conditions that Mystic Mine allowed for when it was real. And one of the worst parts of Mystic Mine was that people would side deck it in, in combo decks. Mm -hmm. And a combo deck, you're not going to be putting spell and trap removal against him because spell and trap removal isn't going to do anything against all of your crazy monsters on the field. Um, so you don't have spell and trap removal in your combo deck, but then your opponent just activates Mystic Mine. If you don't have an immediate negation for Mystic Mine's activation, you're going to deck out and lose the game. Yeah. So that's why Mystic Mine is, uh, is, is infamously one of the most hated cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! is because it was this instant I win button that forced you to play bad cards um, which was really annoying and for your deck building and just felt very counterintuitive. And it obviously created like awful game state where both players, even if you did have the card in your deck, you'd have to draw it. And so you sometimes, you, both players are just sitting there passing 20 turns. It was just <laughs> awful, unfun gameplay. Yeah, I guess I didn't really think about that as a win condition. So I guess it does really come down to how, how many cards decks are currently naturally playing to be able to deal with it. But like before it was banned, decks yeah. just weren't having not naturally be able, we're not able to naturally deal with it very well it was format warping it would it was this constant back and forth like you know flip-flopping between we play mystic mind so now people have to play back yeah. row hate but then we take out mystic mind to counter that now people have a bunch of back row hate that's dead in our deck so now we have to take out the back row hate because we don't need the back row hate to deal with mystic mind because no one's playing but then people put the mystic mind back in so it was like this weird constant battle with the with the player base trying to like you know put bad cards or good cards in their deck and as mentioned, with all of the awful gameplay it, it, it provided even in an ideal situation, it was just unfun. All right, uh, last and final card here. This is a Dimension Shifter. This is what is known as a Hand Trap. It's a card that you can activate from your hand immediately. Despite the fact that it's a monster, you just uh, use the effect on its text here, which is if you have no cards in your graveyard, no cards, quick effect, send this from your hand to the grave. Until the end of the next turn, any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead. And unlike Pot of Desires, it's banished face up rather than face down. So depending on the deck, some decks can interact with their banished piles. So it's mm -hmm. not gone forever for some decks. Uh, but yeah, the idea with Dimension Shifter is when you activate this, all cards go to the banished zone instead of the... Well, not really the zone. Are banished instead of going to the graveyards uh, for two turns. Man, that's a tough one. Because like the first thing I jumped to with this one, or my thought process would be, if there's a deck that somehow combos with sending cards to your... Uh, Know, banish what do you call it banish, banish? pile yeah banish pile. um they're, they do exist yeah. yeah there's a couple yeah so that's what would be my first thought is like you're trying to combo that with your own cards to get them into the banish pile to then interact with them in your banish pile but it seems like you'd have to draw uh, and they, you have to have no cards in your graveyard right to even play this to meet the activation so that's requirement. that's you're, the you're biggest correct. requirement it feels like um so you have to like have this in your opening hand but it seems like I guess it could, the oh, the biggest thing I guess I really like it could be is like a counter to one of your opponent's cards that you just don't want them to have access to anymore. But even then, the requirement of having no cards in your graveyard when you find this to pull that off just seems like too high. The chance that you're gonna have this card before there's a card in your graveyard to be able to take advantage of its following effect does not seem uh, consistent at all. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say this card is bad. Remember what you said about Pot of Desires and how the rest of the card, the cards in your deck weren't accessible yeah. anyway? Yeah, like you'd have to find this and then find the cards it combos with. The only, the, the biggest thing that stands out to me is like, it could, like, the only thing that I can see is like, if there's like a card you really want to banish of your opponents on like turn one, and this could be like side decked in for that. That's the only purpose I can really think of of this. I don't even know what it would have to interact with to actually like make that combo work. But that's like the biggest thing that stands out to me. If it's that important to have, and I guess it's possible, I mean, off your... Is it, is it possible you play, like, a good first turn in Yu-Gi-Oh! and don't end up with any cards in your graveyard? Mm, I mean, I would say probably not. Very rarely. Okay. With that in mind, I mean, if this card is, like, that powerful, and then you just, like, win when you open it, then I guess you would play it. But I, can't, I don't even I don't know the context of other cards that you'd, like, 
want to have banished instead of in a graveyard. Like I said, against your opponent, I could see it. But yeah, I think this card is just too situational. Or it feels too situational. If you draw it at any point past that, it just seems like it's a dead card. I guess, I guess if it's attack and defense are decent, then I guess maybe it's still not terrible as like just a monster. <laughs> but, um, I don't know how good it's attack and defense are. But it is like a six star one, right? So don't you have to like tribute another monster to get this into play? Yeah. yeah so it doesn't do. seem very good. Its stats don't seem very good. Or its attack doesn't. <laughs> okay, right. Sorry, you're cracking me up here. <laughs> All right, so you're extremely wrong. And definitely when you started bringing up stat, this is not why this card is played. <laughs> like, that is not relevant. <laughs> so even when you, um, like, whiff it so, on the... Even if you don't get the initial graveyard effect, I mean, you would still ha you could still summon if, it, but, like, it's 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 not relevant unless you get it for its initial effect. Pretty much, yeah. Like, this card fun. is a card that you need to open or it's terrible, yeah. but the context of the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh! ends pretty much on turn two, three, um, sometimes you grind a little bit longer than that, you have your opening hand and both players open it. The chances of you top-decking it out of the next, like, 35 cards in your deck is, like you know, what, like a 3 in, like, 35, right? So yeah. even if you do draw into it, like, you still had, like, the rest of your the cards in your hand. Um, but the ideal scenario is that Dimension Shifter in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, is one of the most hated cards because so many decks interact with their graveyard. Even decks that um, don't use the graveyard that much still use some uh, degree of resources there. And so the activation requirement, you are correct, is that it's, it's niche and it's um, specific. But it's very specific and niche to the first turn, which is the most important turn. Most of your gameplay happens on turn one and turn yeah. two. So you, if you are playing this, and typically it's used in what we call shifter decks, Cash Tira, Flu Wanderies, they're sort of the anti-meta decks. They try and deal with a lot of the, um, the decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Combo decks especially. A lot of decks, most decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! use their graveyard to some extent, some way more than others. Dimension Shifter is an auto-win against some matchups. You actually just drop this into into your graveyard. I mean, if you draw your opening hand, which is a 33% chance to see this, you win the game on the spot against some decks. Like, you you instantly win the duel. Uh, that's how uh, insane Dimension Shifter is. Uh, banishing cards is extremely powerful, and there's not that many decks that interact with the Banished deck. They, 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 they would have to be thematically designed around the Banished pile, which is what Flunderies and Cash Dira, for example, are, right? Yeah, so I was right that it is, like, more important to, like, it's more it's more so for banishing your opponent's cards than anything to do with getting your own cards into the banish zone, right? Yeah, the the, the thing is like even even if your deck does kind of get hurt by shifter, if your opponent's deck loses harder to shifter, yeah. people sometimes still play this. Okay. Uh, because that's how important it is to try and deny your opponent from playing the game on turn one. So just having this in your side deck or potentially main decking it depending on the format and just you know hoping you open it. You know, like like I said, five card opening hand, thirty three percent chance. That's there's a very good chance that you open this, and if you don't, it's unlikely you'll top deck. And even then, it's like you know, it is what it is. Just variance, I suppose. Yeah. But you, yeah. is this a uh, stopping your opponent? Is this a card that people main deck, or is it a side deck card? If your deck specifically does interact with the banish deck, uh, banish pile quite a lot, like something like Kashtira Flow Andres, it's probably worth maining. Mm -hmm. um, almost almost definitely worth maining because it, it, it there's just like good interactions in your own deck. Um, because it can almost act like a sort of like a pseudo combo piece. Yeah. Uh, but definitely more importantly to just deal with the uh, with the rest of the decks. Like typically banishing cards is like an anti-meta strategy because most meta decks don't really usually use the banished decks. It's kind of rare that a banished deck is usually the best deck. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, I think I could have, if I had thought yeah, about so it a is... little bit further, I think I could have got to the point where I would have been like, it seems like it would be maybe a good side deck card for the purpose of banishing your own opponent's cards mm -hmm. but it feels like yeah because Yu-Gi-Oh is so reliant on the first turn or two of the game I don't know, it feels weird to include a card that has like another added effect on it where it's like you can't have anything in your graveyard or you just can't play this card but i guess with how few cards you see the chance that you see this once you have a card in your graveyard kind of goes the same way right it's like if you get it great if you don't get it you're probably not going to see it and that's fine as well all right final score is uh two correct four wrong um it's not bad it's like it's weird because like so much of your reasoning and logic obviously is going to need some context yeah, we're course. just doing this for fun but you know uh without having the uh if your only experience is like a little bit of goat modern Yu-Gi-Oh is a whole different beast so you're going <laughs> to need so much to really fully grasp 
uh, how good and how bad some of these cards are. So you did pretty well, all things considered. Appreciate it. Yeah, whenever I play Go For I feel like games went on for a little while, to be honest. Like, I feel like I was sitting there. A long time, yeah. yeah. Like, it's not un it's not unreasonable to go at least to, like, turn 10 or something. And yeah, go. yeah. And that's my most most experience. I think it's my only games I played at Yu-Gi-Oh! is literally Go For I may play, like, one game of Yu-Gi-Oh! That's not Go For but... Uh, thanks so much for being a guest. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And I think, uh, you know, this was, uh, this was really fun. Um, so... Is there anywhere that we can find you in various social media shout outs, et cetera, you'd like to leave before uh, heading out? Yeah, no, I had a ton for this. I appreciate you having me on. It definitely makes me want to try and actually like get into Yu-Gi-Oh a little bit, to be honest. It makes me want to like reading all the cards and stuff. Um, maybe I'll try and pick it up again. Something else had a good format at some point. If I've ever run into anyone who has a couple Yu-Gi-Oh decks at a... Do you have any questions? Just let me know. No yeah, problem. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, you can catch me uh, on uh, X or Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch at uh, AzulGG. Uh, Azul underscore GG on X, I guess, but on YouTube and Twitch, you can find me just at Azul GG uh, on both of those. And yeah, appreciate you having me on, and it was fun. All right, anytime. Social media links will obviously be in the description. Scroll down and click and give Azul a follow uh, for those of you who want to check out his Pokemon TCG content.